Thompson for joining us today. Any of be here in Sholo, Arizona here in the north. But a few considerations on the divine providence this morning that uh, remember that God is, uh, when we say that God created the world, he created the world in six days and the creation stopped. God created the world and all the work of creation stopped. One of the grave heresies, in fact, of evolution, evolution teaches things are continuing to evolve and new things are being created, new things are being created, new things are being created. But in fact, God created the whole world at once. If new things are being created, then maybe it, it, what, that is an evil because that means God forgot something, like Columbo. Columbo asking a question, and then he can't remember the last question, he asks another question, and God isn't like Columbo, and God is not absent-minded. God actually makes sure that everything that he created was perfect and good from the beginning. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So in the very beginning of time, God created the heavens and the earth, not over the first 13 billion years, and then, then in the last few years, man started running around. This is a lie, it's foolishness, it's stupidity, it's heresy, and it's a mockery of God. God created the world in absolute perfection. We see the world around us, that all the world belongs together, that we breathe out something on oxygen. Now the trees are really unhappy because men are early, and now it's illegal to breathe out oxygen. And so because of masks and everything, the trees aren't getting the oxygen that they need. And that uh, we breathe out oxygen, which is good for the trees, and they breathe, they, I, mean, we, we, I mean, breathe out carbon dioxide, which is good for the trees, and they breathe out oxygen, which is good for us. And the oxygen is not good for them, and the carbon dioxide is not good for us. And there's a relationship of perfection between all things in the universe that God created in the very beginning. And the work of creation stopped. But what happened when the work of creation stopped? We say what happened after then is the work of preservation the work of divine providence. When we say in a little catechism, what is divine providence? Divine providence is God watching with his loving care over all the work that he created. It says in the book of Psalms that God looks down upon the deer and he runs through the forest. And then God turns his face away and the deer dies. Creation began... At the very beginning, all things are created in the beginning. And from that moment on, God watches over. God preserves. God protects with his loving care all the things that he created. And remember what he said 2,000 years ago? He said, the lilies of the field neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns. But your heavenly Father watches over each one of them. The heavenly Father does watch over the lilies of the field. And the Heavenly Father does watch over the hairs of our head. And he said, the hairs of your head are numbered by God. The lilies of the field are watched over by God. All the deer in the forest are watched over by God. All the ants and all of the animals of all types, all the insects and all of men are watched over by God. And this is what he does over the last 6,000 years. His divine providence watches over all things. And what did our Lord say? Why do you worry, you people? who are supposed to be the people of God. Why do you worry about what you shall eat, what you shall drink, what, how you shall dress, what you should put on? The pagans worry about these things. But you do not know the Heavenly Father loves you more than he loves the flowers. He loves you more than he loves the trees and so on. And he takes care of all the things in the universe. So what is divine providence? God watches over and cares for everything that he made, and he knows what is inside of our hearts. Now, there are many, many, many miracles of divine providence, many of them. So that remember, many people today, for instance, in all times of difficulty, worry, well, how am I going to get through the time of trial? How am I going to be taken care of? Who is going to take care of me? What is, how am I going to get the sacraments in our time of crisis? How am I going to get to what I need from God? God always provides. There was a priest named Father Cummins in Australia. An old priest who was very unhealthy, very sickly. And he was traveling around Australia giving the Latin Mass. And, uh, you know, he was sickly from his 30s and 40s. From a young age, he was sickly, looking like he was ready to die. But he kept going and going and going. And he would bring the sacraments. 
went to the middle of nowhere, Australia, in the Streaky Bay, and given the sacraments to a, a lady there, to a f family there. And the local noble sort of priest said, how can you watch, how is that old priest going to take care of you? He travels all over the world, all over Australia, and, and, and you're not going to be taken care of. How are you going to get buried Catholic? How are you going to receive the anointing that you need? How are you going to receive the sacraments you need when he's all around? And so she became, and he goes everywhere. She was worried. She said, Father Cummins, that's what the priest said to me, and that he's here right here in Shrieky Bay, a young priest. He's right here in the local number of church. He says, how am I going to be anointed? How am I going to be taken care of? And Father Cummins said, I've always found that whenever I'm needed, I'm not very far away. And there are many, many times, so many times, that the priest travels from one place to another, and there is where he is needed. And the Lord Jesus Christ said about his apostles, he said, where the minister, where I am, there also my minister shall be. He didn't say where the minister is, he is. There's many times the priest is there, but Christ is absent. Many times the priest preaches, the priest gives the sacraments, St. St. Alphonso's glory says, the priest anoints the, uh, the man who's not sorry for his sins, and all it is is a sacrilege. The priest gives him confession, and it's another sacrilege. The priest buries him, and it's another sacrilege, and he burns in hell. The priest is there, but Christ is not there. Our Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ did not say, where the priest is, where the minister is, I shall be. But he said by the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, Wherever I am, my minister shall be. The minister shall come. And that is, it, 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 that the God will provide for everyone uh, that, that loves him. So that even if we're in the middle of the wilderness, if we're in a place that cannot be, we cannot be found, God knows where that place is, and he will make sure that we are found. Divine providence takes care. God, with his loving care, watches over all the souls that love him, and he will make sure they make it through. We can try to prepare by storing up MREs and storable foods and healthy water and machine guns and bullets to prepare for the great time of difficulty. But our Lord talked about that kind of preparation. He said there was a man that stored up all the food into a barn that he would be ready for the winter. He stored everything up, but in the middle of the night, he died. It is not necessary for us to store up all the things of this world. God will provide. We have to store up the love of God in our hearts, Store up the faith in our minds. Store up his spirit in our, in our passions and our actions. And when we live by faith, God will provide. He will find a way to bring us that which we need. Divine providence will always be. God will always take care of us. And remember that uh, we have to have confidence in divine providence. The time of creation is finished, but the time of providence continues. And God provides for all that, that love him. And he will provide until the very end of time. He will pass on the faith from this generation to the next generation, from the next generation to the end of the, till the last generation of time. The faith shall never be stamped out, and all those that love him shall receive the necessary graces to be able to save their souls. They shall receive all the fruit they need, and we should not worry about the material things. One material thing is, I need confession every few days. I need Mass every Sunday. I need my Holy Communion. We need our Lord Jesus Christ. We need every word that proceeded from this mouth. We need the faith. And he will give us the Mass when it's possible, when it's beneficial to us, when we need it. He will give us the confession when possible. He teaches us how to, re how to make a perfect act of contrition and to receive the spirit of confession if we're not able to go to confession all the time. We need how to make a perfect act of charity and receive Holy Communion in the heart, even if we're not able to physically receive Holy Communion all the time. And so that... That, that, that God will provide for us by his grace and have confidence that he will provide, and he will come in his own good time and take care of us until our dying day, as long as we know, love, and serve him to the best of our ability. So in any case, we'll close it at that. And God bless you all, then. Have great confidence in the divine providence. We'll close that. God bless you all. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.